Okay. I'm so excited. Right, yes. <sighs> Another full house for everyone, which is awesome. So thanks everyone for uh, for RCPing to this. I'm just getting our Facebook Live going, um, and we'll wait a few a few minutes here and get going for about 11:02. Um, welcome everyone right. who's joining in now. So ready for the long weekend. This is I'm in um, just coffee chairs. Coffee chairs for the morning. Happy Friday. Water, <laughs> water, 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 water cheers. cheers. Classy as hell. Mm. <laughs> Carissa's just like, no, no drink. I said Glenn from <laughs> tea. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, this is Edwin. If anyone hasn't met Edwin, this is Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we're getting uh, the room filled up here. So I think we'll get rolling. Um, welcome again, everyone. This is uh, How To From Home. This is number three. Uh, very excited about how this series has unfolded. Um, it's been a tremendous success um, since two weeks ago. Um, and we're diving into different topics about how to succeed in the digital space. Obviously very topical and important um, during these times right now. But uh, I think what we're talking about um, today and the past two weeks and again subsequent weeks after this is going to be relevant for lifelong careers so that's really important. Um, if you're tuning in on Zoom, it's again for our RCPing um, as well we'll be streaming on Facebook. Welcome to those on Facebook today. Um, I'm Jimmy, I'm from Music BC um, and again we're talking about um, strategies on how to stage and present great content from home um, and we're joined by experts from different parts of the entertainment industry that are going to weigh in on how artists and presenters and musicians can really raise the bar of their live streams um, whether it's on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live or through Instagram um, and any other channel as well so very happy to be talking about this today on the Friday before the big long weekend. Um, I'd also like to thank our supporters, uh, Creative BC, the province of British Columbia, Factor, and the Government of Canada. They've been instrumental in helping support not only us, but I think people across the industry um, to make things like this and these education series possible. So thanks again. Um, a few housekeeping items before we get started with the panel. Um, as we continue these week over week um, series episodes uh, after the after the call today. It would be prompted to fill out a quick survey. Um, this is a great chance for you to offer some feedback as well as uh, pose a few different topics that you might want to see covered in, in the weeks to come. So definitely take a few minutes to fill that out. Um, if this is the first time using a Zoom, a Zoom webinar, um, at the very bottom you'll see a Q&A button. Um, that's the best spot for you as a viewer to pose questions or comments that uh, we can address to the panel. Uh, and myself and Christina uh, will be monitoring those throughout the call today um, and get to them um, as quickly as we can. Um, there might be a chance that we might miss a few, so definitely um, still do pose those questions. Um, I'll be collecting those throughout the, the call as well and we'll try to get them to, uh, to be answered whether it's here or beyond. Um, for those on Facebook, that won't apply to you, but uh, we'll definitely be looking at the comments. So do engage with us on those comments. Um, it's been great to see the different conversations happening on, on the Facebook um, comment over the past few weeks, so keep that up. Um, okay, that's all for me, so I'll flip it to you, Christina. Um, Christina Lau, by the way, is an active member of our board of Music BC, um, and she's also an actor, presenter, and a very strong artist advocate, so we're in very good hands again today. So enough out of me. Christina, take it away. Hi, thank you so much, Jimmy. Um, you're amazing. You just all give a big round of applause for Jimmy in your homes. Um, <laughs> that was perfectly synchronized. Oh, this panel. Um, so I would like to say, uh, first and foremost, uh, I know that we're in kind of airspace right now, um, but uh, I personally, and I think most of us are currently residing on the, um, on the territories of the Coast Salish people, so the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam and Squamish nations, and I want to acknowledge that we are um, visitors on this land and hopefully we will all be good guests. Um, so just wanted to do that, and then I would like to also share my pronoun is she and her, um, and or her, uh, and I'm going to run you through the, the schedule today just because I'm a schedule person uh, and then we are going to dive straight into it just so that I'm managing your expectations. Um, we're going to first I'm going to introduce all of our wonderful panelists for today and then uh, we are going to have about 10 minutes for each of our panelists to give you tips and tricks um, to make the most out of your content with what you have at home uh, and this is something I've been extremely um, extremely 
passionate about uh, for a long time. Uh, and I'm really, really glad and very grateful to Music BC for putting on these how-to series. So I know that Jimmy says this, but if um, you enjoy them, please do fill out that feedback form. Uh, please make sure that you are um, engaging and following and posting on social media about it because we really want to support as many artists as possible and creatives and people who are supporting artists in this industry. So that's my little blurb. Uh, then we're going to go through, we're going to have short question breaks, just so you know. Um, if you do have questions, uh, I'll be watching. I've got my little chat up on the sidebar here. Uh, so I will be watching and so will Jimmy. Uh, we'll jump in uh, and have a few minutes uh, after every single panelist so that you've got a bit of a chance to talk. But basically what I want for everyone to get out of today um, is for you to be able to set up your space with what you have to present yourself in the best light. Uh, and I think that's why I'm so excited to have these, I'm sorry, but I'm so excited to have these panelists on here. These are my, these are like just superhuman people. So very, very excited. And I'll try not to fan, fan girl all over you all the time uh, throughout. So number one, uh, I would like to introduce the first person who's going to be speaking is Brandon William Fletcher. If you don't know Brandon, he is an award-winning director, photographer, graphic artist with a borderline compulsion for telling stories. Um, that is Brandon. Uh, he also teaches um, part-time at Nimbus School of Recording and Media. Um, which is a wonderful, another wonderful resource um, and place to find uh, more information about the music community. Uh, I'm a graduate uh, as well, so I'm totally biased and unapologetic about that. So yeah, check them out. Uh, the next person who we're going to be speaking to is Beatrice King. Beatrice King is a highly sought after actor and acting coach. Uh, she can be seen in projects like Mortal Kombat, so jealous, uh, Supernatural, and Peter Farrelly's Louder Milk, now on Amazon Prime. Beatrice coaches actors and performers through one-on-one -on -one online coaching across North America and be, can be reached at her Instagram page at BB King. And I'll put, um, Jimmy, if you could actually put um, all of our panelists' handles uh, in the chat for people to, to follow, that would be great. Uh, okay, and then finally, oh, thank you. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have Carissa. Carissa's fun and down-to-earth approach to all things lifestyle is an inspiration to women around the globe. I can 100% attest to that. Uh, fans subscribe to Carissa's platforms for holistic, holistic lifestyle tips, plant-based recipes, along with self-care and fitness routines, home styling, outfit inspiration, and beauty regime. Uh, Carissa, I have to say, is someone that I've wanted to have involved um, with anything that I'm doing for the longest time because I know Carissa through her fiance, Glenn, who is, is he hiding somewhere there? Yes. Is Glenn hiding? Uh, <laughs> Glenn, <laughs> and there's Glenn. So Glenn might pop in. Um, <laughs> Glenn might pop in at some point um, to uh, help with setup or other things if, if necessary. So there you go, that's Glenn. Um, okay, so that's the introductions of everybody. Uh, Oh my gosh, I'm, I have two minutes to spare. That's, that never happens. Uh, so we're gonna launch straight in. I know Brandon's confused, we're all confused. Um, so Brandon, you're gonna launch straight in. Um, I will say one more time before he does, uh, everyone who is uh, on the Zoom, um, I won't see the Facebook feed, but if you're on the Zoom, uh, please say hello, have a little chat ski on the side um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll watch out for it, so. Here we go. Brandon Fletcher, tell us all of your wisdom. Go. As much as we can in 10 minutes. <coughs> um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Brandon. My pronouns are he and him. And we're going to talk a little bit about just uh, ways to create a vibe uh, and whatever your specific vibe is going to be. I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on lighting uh, and what kinds to use. But the first and most important thing you need to figure out is what are you presenting? Um, what's the content that you're making? There's not a blanket lighting style that's gonna work for all of them. Um, even as you're looking at all of our screens right now, I think all of our lighting and layouts probably represent our brands a little bit more than you might find other people's videos that would be on. Um, right now, my lighting feels kind of natural, but I assure you, uh, it's not. It's just a few different things popped up in here to mimic real lighting, uh, but to fit my brand, which is sad Italian disco vampire. Um, <laughs> Hence a lot more shadows on my side of the face, but uh, a lot of these lovely ladies have more frontal light on them, which will probably get them to show one a little bit. And that fits their brand. If you're looking for more of a, a home or lifestyle brand, you're probably gonna wanna have nice soft lighting on your face. You're gonna wanna diffuse any imperfections. You're gonna wanna make yourself look better. I can get away with something a bit edgier 
Um, also because I'm a man, sometimes it's nice to have a bit more detail in the face where women, you want to have a bit more of a soft and, uh, and beautiful, smooth, like skin, like all these beautiful ladies here in front of us. So, uh, first thing to do in your house is a mental check. Uh, what lights do you have? And you might not think certain lights can work for this. For instance, in this case, I'm using, uh, my roommate Jeff's lights. It is technically a film light with a CFL bulb. Um, but you could use almost anything that's going to have a nice light, uh, clean light for it. You just might not want to mix it with daylight normally. Uh, typically, lights are going to have two different types of temperatures, an indoor and an outdoor. Uh, and you just want to use all the same. Otherwise, you're going to have weird mixed lighting. Which is sometimes if you take a picture inside, if you've seen the picture's a bit too blue, or if you're outside and the picture's a bit too blue, that's when it's trying to figure out your lighting stuff. So maybe just stick with daylight lights, and then you can find out what kind of light you have. So that was my first example of a light to have, but you can use just about anything. You could use an indoor light in your house. Um, I've got these really cheap Arcan lights that I bought before at uh, Rona Home Hardware, anything like that. You can even start using all kinds of lights you might find for uh, construction or if you're at your parents' house that might have shop lights. Almost anything that's going to project light out of it can be used. It's just how close, how far away and the quality of light that we're gonna be using with it. Um, I've got a quick YouTube video, not one that I've done, but that I've used before for other people. It's got some great DIY lighting stuff. I'm going to throw that to Jimmy. He can give you guys a link um, after the project or some way that you can all come see it. I'll pop it into the chat for right now. Um, but that can definitely go on and explain deeper um, what kind of lights you can have. You have to worry about taking any notes specifically from me. Um, so outside Brandon. of that, yeah. I do have one interjectory question though. If you, if you are looking at the types of lights around your home, um, and you're probably gonna touch on this, but the hues of the lights, um, do you need to just make a mental note of like, okay, this one's a warm light, this one's a more of a cold light, when you're making that little inventory of what you have around you? Yeah, so when I was saying um, like indoor, outdoor lights, that's also gonna be the same thing as your light temperature. Thank you for that, Christina. Sometimes I forget which mm. phrases are more recognizable. Um, so the same kind of an idea, if you've got a light that's from indoor, it's going to be a warmer light. It's going to appear to be a bit orange, a softer light, a little bit yellow. Um, if you've got a light that's an outdoor light that's close to matching the sun, um, think about a lighter. When you get hotter, the flame on the outside that's cooled down is yellow, but as you get closer to the core of that propane or the butane, that flame gets hotter and it gets blue. That's pretty close to the color temperature of the sun, so the light from outside is a bit more blue. So this would be cooler blue light. Indoor light is going to be orange, warm, yellower light. Uh, you don't want to mix the two typically. It's not a nice blend when they do happen. Um, but if you can be using it artistically, and I'll get into that in a little bit, um, then you can do a little bit better. But just stick with one or the other. Daylight blue might be your best bet because you're going to have a lot of windows nearby. So while we're talking about sources of light, a window is a natural source of light. Um, again, they all have pros and cons. If you have lights that you have to buy, they're going to spend money, but they're going to be constant. This window is absolutely free, but as I'm sure you're noticing, it's inconsistent. Throughout the day, it's going to fade in, it's going to fade out. I can't control the, the sunlight. So that's a less ideal situation, which is why I like a constant bulb like this, or this light bulb that I've got back here. So they're actually more of a film light. I've got a little remote control for it, so you can see. Um, but what that's also doing is, is coming in from the back and it's separating me a little bit. Um, so the, the ladies are going to talk a bit about some of the outfits and better outfits you can choose to stand out in your video. Um, but something that this light is doing is also separating you. So when you're looking at video, when your eye is looking at an image or a video, your eye, the first thing it's going to find is the brightest spot in that picture and then it's going to look for eyes or a face. And if you're both, especially as the ladies are right here and now, you can see almost every single person on here except for me. <laughs> Um, all the women, the brightest and the face are the first spot in there. It's separated from the background. Christina's got a nice warm skin tone and her background, well, there's a bit of the, the warm uh, couch, but everything behind her and a ring light, again, making that nice even light on her face. Um, but Christina stands out from her background because her skin tone is more of a pinky orange color and her background is blue. Those are the opposite ends of the color spectrum. So she's got a nice contrast between her and the background. Um, She's gonna also say never shoot against white, which is true, unless you have a fog machine like I do. So you can't really even tell that there's that much haze in here, but I put up atmosphere. And what that's doing is it builds up the further I get back. So the tones of black in my shirt are now no longer the same black tones behind me and I am separated. So I appear to be brighter by contrast. Um, you put on a fog machine? You don't? Before this. 
I don't know what I've been doing in my life. Christina, have you ever heard Everybody one? needs a fog machine. More fog is the one thing you've always heard me scream on every set. Beatrice can attend. You are right. Um, <laughs> so, anything can be a light. You just want to think about what the color temperature is and where it's matching. Christina, how many minutes do I have left? I'm not as far as I think I should be. Yeah, it's 11.15. You have... Uh, you have five. You have five minutes. Okay, perfect. Maybe perfect. maybe seven. Okay, so anything can be a light. Just think about the color temperature, and if you're not really sure, you're gonna start to find out real fast when it's on your computer. You're gonna see that the color is gonna try to switch back and forth between the two. That's when you know they're not the same. Um, a lot of them tricks. If you're buying stuff on Amazon too or online, it'll just say like a daylight bulbs. Um, those are great. So just go with a daylight bulb, try to mix it outdoor, you're gonna be good. The next thing you need to know is where is that light being positioned? Um, so I'm assuming that Carissa and Christina will both be having the same idea. It's probably gonna be a nice soft, either a round ring light or square, maybe LED light straight at their face, probably a little bit high and pointing downwards. What that's gonna do is grab cheekbone lights and drag them down. It's gonna increase definition on the face. That's why I've got this light coming from the back. It's also, as you can see, drawing a little bit of attention to the jawline I wish I had. Um, we're trying to create uh, this idea of depth in our image. So the old trick that we've told everyone that when you're taking a selfie, right, get your camera up and make sure that you're looking down at yourself. Um, that's just a trick that we tell normies that don't know how to use normal lighting. So yes, that old MySpace photo works, but as long as you've got a light source that's about 45 degrees off your head, either forward for ladies, or for men, 45 and then another 45, you're gonna be getting this nice shadow that has a beautiful little fall off here. If I turn this off, that sunlight's not gonna wrap around my face, it's not gonna do much detail, but this just adds a little bit of shading. So positioning is gonna be a key part. I've also got a video here that shows how your face changes in different lighting, um, but the best thing is gonna be is to just test it out for yourself. So I'm gonna pop this one into the chat as well. Um, and it just shows you, again, as this light moves around my face here, this looks a bit nicer. This lighting looks a bit menacing. It's all about what kind of a vibe you're going for in your video. And that's gonna decide where those lights are being positioned um, and how you're selling your brand or your band. I right? vote for I vote for creepy light for you yeah. for future. Creepy, creepy fog lighting. But... A little too on brand for me, maybe. <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, I'm gonna skip through the composing of a shot. Christina, I'm gonna let you or uh, Chris will probably have a great idea for that too, just to make sure that you don't have a lot of empty headspace, guys. Um, light angles are great. Uh, fast track for lighting, manipulating light. Okay, so we have lights and we have them in decent positions. Um, now we wanna be able to control or manipulate them. So this is light, it's a soft light, that's great. What if we had a really hard uh, or a clear tungsten light, like the kind you might put into your, your roof? Um, hard light is going to create hard shadows. That's what you're seeing with the sun. There's no fall off. It's a straight line between bright and dark. So if we can diffuse that light, we're gonna have a nice soft roll off. You guys might not have this kind of stuff taking around, but in the film industry, we use gels. So this gel can change the kind of light that I've got on my face thereby changing the kind of branding that we have, especially if we're gonna be going through a window, that's gonna be way cooler. Um, you might not have this kind of stuff around and on a whim, we've actually shot with one of these shitty lights through one of those blue Costco bags, like an inch away from someone's face to get a blue light on them in front of a green screen once because we just didn't wanna to go to the shop and pick up all of our gear. So again, you can get creative with this. Like there's no rules as long as the final image is what you want it to be. Um, so main diffusion is great. It looks like this. And it just softens light that comes out. Right here, you can even see already with this fluorescent, it makes the light a lot softer and a big piece of diffusion. The bigger this piece is, the bigger my light source becomes. The bigger my light source is, the softer it's gonna be on myself. So I can't pull this light further away from myself to make it bigger, otherwise I'm not gonna have any brightness on me. But if I diffuse it, it's gonna spread that source out. Okay, you might not have this, that's fine. So what you probably do have at home, shower curtains. I shit you not, you would be surprised how many indie films and music videos will use shower curtains as diffusion. I've seen full feature length movies using shitty rigs. Just putting this shower curtain between me and the light, watch this. So here's, let's see, here's some harsh sunlight. 
Ooh, great. Oh, you're so soft. And the whole body now has this soft light on it. So it's increased the size of where the light is versus this one little harsh beam there. So this mm. kind of thing, like people fully hang this up in sets between that and, and giant film lights sometimes. And if you have a really bright light like that, use, use two. You put them between each other, spread that light out even more, make it even softer. Yeah, Christina. Nimkesh is just asking, can you use parchment paper? Absolutely, yeah. Anything that's going to okay. cut down the light, it's going to cut it down just with varying degrees. So to the amount it cuts it down is going to be up to you to test how close or how far your lights need to be to get that diffusion. The parchment right, paper and I'm thinking too aggressive, but it would still make a difference. Okay, um, uh, so I'm thinking like test your materials, see what materials you have out. Um, fine, fine loomed materials versus wide. Obviously, you just need to make sure you've got like I'm thinking like a cheesecloth type of thing. Those lighter ones would probably be good diffusers. Hey, totally. Another thing that you can do if you don't have that option is just have your bright light. Like I'm gonna use this one for instance. I'm gonna bring it over here a bit closer. One second, guys. Sorry, I know there's downtime with the video. It's Man, man, Christina, tell a story. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Tell a story. Okay, quick. Yeah, no, I'm on it. Actually, this was what I was going to do is put down my, my light because I've yeah. got two lights here. And actually, if I, you were talking about the mood earlier. And because I've got this ring light, I could choose to, to be in this setting and have that little that bit more romantic kind of feel. I also, just so you know, I'm going to show you all what I, what I have because this is, I basically tried to set it up so that I could show you all of these little random bits and pieces, but this is what my place looks like. And I put that ring light there. I've got the guitar here for you musicians. Um, and I put, Je that's Jeff, Jeff's that plant. Um, okay. I put Jeff there, yeah, um, just in case uh, we were trying to look around, move around with kind of items and things. Um, but playing with those different sources of light is a really important thing to do. We have nothing it's but really important. hands right now. So use this to that's fool true. around with lighting, spend an afternoon. Um, you know, pour a glass of wine, just just play with lighting all day. Uh, yeah. A couple of really yeah. quick things. So if you can't diffuse the light, again, this is quite harsh. Just bounce it. Same idea, right? I'm going to turn this away from myself. Just a cheap card. I got three of these for like 99 cents at the dollar store. If that light's away from me and now it's bounced back at me, look at the difference that's making on my face. Right? So again, we can still soften and diffuse that light. We're just trying to manipulate the quality of it um, and, and make sure that we have an ability to make ourselves look a bit more flattering. Um, finally, things that you can get, these are more expensive and you probably may or may not have them kicking around at home and it's daylight. So we'll see if you can see it, but I've also got Philips Hue lights. So if I look in the background here, the red light that just turned on a little bit there, it's a lot nicer at night. But um, just Philips Hue lights, you can make them be any color. You can bring them close to your face. I've even seen some of our old students from Nimbus filming uh, little music videos in their house using those kind of colors. Um, finally, one last thing. Oh. Okay, and then I have a couple quick questions. So. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys is just going to be a neat trick for your cell phones, how you can control this. So you might be working from your computer, but you might also be working from a cell phone that you're showing stuff off. So, Christina, can we see my phone again? Yes, we can. All right. So while I'm filming in here, you guys probably see the same thing with your own cameras and phones. While it's moving around, it's adjusting its exposure. We don't want that. We want to be able to lock it. And we want to be able to lock our, uh, our focus on that as well. So if it's moving around or the light changer, if the sun is changing, it's not going to have a difference. So if I just hold my camera, this work with anybody's camera phone, you just hold your finger on it for two seconds you're gonna see that little square come down. And now when I move the camera, that exposure is locked. It's not gonna to try to flicker around, which is your first oh. unprofessional example, the wire or a webcam or a cheap camera is being used. Not just that, if I drag my finger up on my camera or down, I can control the exposure all that I want to. And you'll see that it's actually focused on my manual exposure too. So I'll lock it even closer here. And I've got a shitty old iPhone 7 and I still got some depth of field there. So I can take some pretty cool pictures and again, that focus yeah. is, is locked and that exposure is locked. So once I've got my lighting all keyed in, once I've got all the stuff where I want it to be, I can lock my camera so I know that that lighting is not going to change. Oops, uh, start video. And oh, I wanna... fine. <laughs> I'll get there. All right. That's that... great. Is it me now? All right, cool. Um, those that was are awesome. Things. Okay. 
those are the big things. But I mean, Brandon is like literally just a, a, an endless well of knowledge in this, in this side of things. So I'm going to, Brandon, I'm going to ask you a couple of things. I'm going to ask you to go into the chat after this yeah. and um, write down your suggestions for light boxes because that's one of the questions. Um, Shirley Parsons, who's asking about um, glasses, we'll get to that with Beatrice. Um, Sandy Backgrounds, we'll get to that with Beatrice as well. And then Dan, um, for the microphone and audio questions, um, we're kind of sticking more to the visual side of things, but I can definitely answer that question offline later. So just send me a message because I know you um, and we'll deal with that. Um, okay, so Brandon, those basically the questions for you are the light box um, and we are, oh, we're doing so well for time, everybody. Let's just give ourselves a really quick round of applause. Uh, um, so what I'm going to do is, Brandon, you can do that. And then I'm just going to recap what you've said in as quick as I can possibly do. So um, first, remember what your intention is from a branding perspective. Um, for women, you want that kind of smoother skin. For, for men, you can kind of have that little bit more of a harsher lighting. Probably. As a generalization. Probably. As a generalization, yeah. Um, and then light inventory. So take a light inventory, indoor versus outdoor lights. Um, just remember that uh, not everyone has a funk machine, uh, but uh, you can use the light to separate yourself. So the separating yourself is a really important um, thing to note. Often I worry that people backlight a lot, but the reality is you need to just balance that light. So you yeah. need to create uh, a, as much of a three-dimensional um, image as possible. Uh, then you, for the little iPhone thing, the light source needs to be 45 degrees off of your head. Is that correct? Yep. 45. That's a general rule. 45 over. Nice, real right. nice. It's called Rembrandt lighting. It worked for 400 years. Why fight it now? Okay. Um, and then in terms of the light diffusion and bouncing, make sure that you can, you look around and see what you have in terms of materials, your shower curtains, um, parchment paper you can use. White bed sheets. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. See, see what you can use. And also the other thing I forgot was um, don't mix those lights, the indoor light versus the outdoor light. Uh, Brandon has the links in the chat for everybody um, for what you need to do in terms of um, uh, looking up other YouTube videos for how to set up your light at home. And then the cell phone trick as the final thing for lock exposure. Yep. Did I get it? That's yeah, almost all of it. Great. Um, so da -da 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 -da, lighting, could a large TV screen that is not in use during shooting or streaming be used with a displayed image as a source to change the light? That's a very good question. Um, it could be. I wouldn't expect a TV to have a large lumen output. So again, the quality of light is one thing, but the amount of light that comes out of something. So that is not an impossible idea. I'm not sure how bright your TV is. Um, there's no rules. Try it. Okay. Yeah, try. Okay, great. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, I'll fly through the uh, chat and just make sure I've got everybody. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and check in if you can see the Q and A. Um, yeah. If there's anything you can answer in the Q and A, go for it. Love it. Thanks, everyone. So, thanks. Um, okay, so now we're going to Beatrice. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> so, tell us, tell us how to look as fabulous as you look, always. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, first I want to say how great was Brandon. Brandon was amazing. Thank you so much, Brandon, for sharing all of that. Um, I'm going to be, yes, talking about how to look great. Um, I'll be talking about some on-camera tips and also tips when it comes to performance. Um, yeah, and I just, I want to say that I work with such a variety of different performers and artists from different backgrounds and different experience levels. And please just know that all of these skills can be learned. So, you know, take this one step at a time. I know we're going through a lot of information today, but just note that, you know, it's not always about that final product or outcome. You're going to be taking these little steps and then gradually getting a little bit better at doing them. Um, so ultimately for any performer, it really does come, come down to performance. That is number one, your performance. Um, and in order to engage engaging in order to create engaging content, you want to be engaged in what you are doing. That means that you are present, that you are at ease, that you are confident. And when you're doing your at home setup, I feel like this happens a lot of time with performers and actors, but they tend to get a little flustered with the setup process. So they're, you know, they're the director, they're putting up their lights, they're doing the sound, they're their own makeup artist. And then all of a sudden that residual energy gets pulled into the performance when they go ahead and they start uh, putting themselves on camera. So 
um, please make sure that you're allowing yourself enough time to experiment, like Brandon mentioned, and that you are taking a little bit of a break <laughs> after your setup before you launch into putting yourself on camera. Um, and so the other thing I want to mention is just note that you guys are creatives and as creatives, again, don't just focus about the outcome, focus on um, your opportunity to create and create from a place of joy and exploration and take risks because sometimes, you know, that end product might not be exactly what you thought it was going to be like. Um, but that's okay. Just leave it. Come back a second day. You've got another day to come back and try it out again. And just note that it might not be perfect the very first time. Um, so I'm going to talk about now the camera and some on-camera techniques. Um, one is always note where your camera lens is. So on different devices, there are, you're going to have your lens kind of, you know, in different places. Um, of course, you know, for a standard Canon camera, you'll know where the lens is, but for something like an iPhone, a lot of times performers will be looking at different spots on your iPhone. So maybe over here, over here, note that the lens is right here. And this is where your audience is. So that's going to be really important for, you know, everyone to know where the lens is so that they're actually connecting and um, allowing their energy to come through the device and through the camera lens, especially when you're speaking to that audience. And then ask yourself, who is your audience? So whenever I'm filming something, whether it be um, a scene or, uh, you know, even when I'm doing a talk, I'm visualizing the person that I'm talking to. So even though there's no other person on the other side of the lens, I'm going, okay, who is it that I'm trying to communicate to? So um, that brings me to three different types types of eye lines that you can use that you can start to play around with when you're filming content at home. One is the inward gaze. And the inward gaze is when you are um, more in a contemplative um, thought where you're just in more of that exploration of maybe the piece of music or the content or maybe an instrument. You're really kind of jiving with the notes and the sounds. And that inwards gaze just sits right here. Sometimes a mistake that performers make is that inward gaze tends to go downwards. So I always say like cheat everything up towards camera to where the lens is. Make sure that you're not creating any shadows. Um, also, if you're wearing a hat, I know sometimes performers like to wear hats. Just note that again, if you're wearing a ball cap even, if you're coming down like this, you're going to create a shadow on your face. So make sure that you're cheating even your hats a little bit further back, that um, you no know, shadows being cast on your face. And um, you know, with that inward gaze, you can use that, but just make sure that your eyes are still coming up and forward at some times during your performance so that your audience is still with you. So um, you know, they're, along, they're along the same sort of wavelength and journey that you're on. The next one is number two, personal gaze. And this is where you go ahead and you spike the lens of your camera, where you're looking straight at them. Um, again, you're gonna ask yourself, who's your audience? And that's a really great way, way for you to connect. Um, the third one is your outward gaze. So this is where you look past the camera lens. Um, it gives an illusion that you're in a space much larger than your own. Um, it can feel like you are performing all the way to the back row in a concert setting. I always find that it, again, extends your space. So if you um, are visualizing that, that back row, your energy will also start matching that. So if you're trying to go for that sort of vibe in your video um, in, a, in a performance, then definitely you can play around with that gaze going past the camera lens. Just make sure that it's not going too high up or too far down again. Um, again, camera placement should be typically at eye level. You want it at eye level. You don't want it too far down. It's not a very flattering shot. We don't want to see your chin. Um, too high up can create a lot of shadows as well. So typically it's eye level. Then what you want to do is you want to think about what kind of background to use. And a really good rule of thumb is try to not select a background that is more interesting than yourself where your eye gets drawn to the background and not you. Ultimately, you are the performer. We wanna see you front and center. Um, and I know Christina and Brandon mentioned the no white in the background. That just tends to wash performers out generally. 
Um, and that's why we tend to steer away from also black backgrounds. It just absorbs all of the light. Um, and so what I really recommend, oh yes, we have a question from Christina. Sorry, just interjecting on that exact point, because Sandy had a question about the different hues and the different colors. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know that Sandy performs too, like a, a terracotta orange sort of background. Is it just worth trying it to see what works with the lights that you have? Like this is kind of a Brandon and Beatrice question. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that most of the time, like I just happen to have this blue background, it happens to work with my skin tone, mm -hmm. um, but there might be different people with all your different types of skin um, mm -hmm. that you need to just play around with that. There's no hard and fast rule, right? Right. Well, you need, yeah, you need to play around with your lights and also your skin tone. Um, typically though, blues and grays are the most flattering background tones. They work with almost all skin types. You look really great on camera. Like the blue that you have is fantastic because it's sort of like, it, it's darker and it's a little bit between like a gray and a blue. Um, I tend to steer away from like those really bright blue tones. Um, they tend to look for me a little harsh on camera. So even when I'm looking at like performer self tapes and things like that, I go, whoa, okay, that's really harsh and um, they kind of look almost fluorescent on camera. So your background is a really great example of a really great shade of blue. I also have seen really beautiful grays that have looked excellent on camera. Um, you do wanna make sure guys that there are no creases in your background. So if, you're, if you have like a drape or something that you're hanging, a bed sheet, please iron them because your audience's eye will go to that crease first. You'll be just looking at that crease and you won't be able to focus on anything else, guaranteed. So um, no creases. Um, also, do not film against blinds in your apartment or your homes. I, I've seen this a couple of times where performers have recorded against blinds and like the lights kind of coming in and your black backlit, it is like the worst place to possibly film. You don't want to be doing that. Yes, use the natural light, but don't use, again, blinds as your background. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about framing. So framing is really key because, again, as performers, you are telling a story with that framing. So you can play around with where do you sit in the frame? Are you sitting camera right? Are you sitting camera left? Um, if you have a partner or uh, a roommate, you can again have them sort of follow you and see what works and watch that back on camera. There are over the shoulder shots, shots where the camera is capturing your reflection, the mirror, if you're trying to do something creative, there are close ups and then again different locations where you know your partner can be using some movement to film some of the content. Um, so a person that does this really, really well is an artist. Her, she's a singer songwriter and she's um, in London. She's a she's a British and her name is Joy Crooks and she does this really well. Um, I really strongly recommend going to her Instagram page and checking out her content and videos. Uh, she's also has some um, YouTube uh, videos that she's thrown up where she has done actual uh, filming at home, like these tiny, like these essentially music videos. And she used things like plants in her home and the gel lights. And it totally reminded me of Brandon because uh, Brandon did a similar music video where, again, using some plants really helps create at atmosphere. Those gel lights made it look like a jungle. So it brought me back to that music video Brandon directed. So um, along with incorporating some movement into the content, movement is really key. Again, if you're playing, you want to be aware of what your body is doing. So if you're playing an instrument, you don't want to be bent too far forward. You don't want to be pulling yourself back. You really want to be balanced and in your body during the performance. That communicates, again, um, the story, the feel behind your music, what you're feeling emotionally. So that's going to be really important. Um, be really invested in the story that you're telling through the music and the performance. Again, as musicians, in large part, the story is going to come through the lyrics. So this is especially important, I think, when artists, uh, performers take on um, a cover where they're maybe they didn't write the words and they're doing a different song. Sometimes they feel like they didn't really understand why the song was written to begin with. And this is where it always comes back to story and really understanding, okay, what is the message here? What is my objective here with the music? How am I trying to reach my audience? Um, 
asking yourself objective will really help streamline what it, what it is you're trying to do with the music itself. Um, how am I doing for time, Christina? Good? Good, um, but I do okay. have one thing to say to speak to that. Sorry, I'm in the middle of um, answering. There's some really great questions coming through. Um, sure. uh, one of the big things that I think is really important on that last point is to remember um, what you're, when you're saying, you know, to, to be interested in the story that you're telling as a, as a musician, remember what your eye lines are. Because when you're, like Beatrice and I know from an acting perspective, as soon as we go from being on stage to being on screen, every micro behavior is blown up a million times. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting there and you've got your guitar and you're like here and you've got this thing and this is like in the, in the way and you're just like moving stuff around and your mic's like coming out here, you just need to remember to set up in such a way that you're focusing on the right elements. And I think that's a trial and error kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. Right. And you're right. Like all of those little maybe texts or habits that you might have on stage are going to be amplified tenfold when you are on camera. The camera really doesn't lie. It's a really great medium for that because you are sitting in nice and close with the performer. So it is picking up on everything. If you are doing even like a little bit of a lip smack like this, it is going to pick that up. So again, as you're singing, if you're, you know, feeling parched, if you're um, maybe, you know, mumbling or some of the words, like all of that will absolutely get heightened and picked up on camera. So yes, thank you for talking a little bit about that, Christina. Great, um, and I do and have one more question. Yeah, sure. Sorry, that came in before from, Sh I think it was Shirley, glasses. The glasses, okay. We need to talk about glasses. Right. Um, well, glasses is a tricky thing because it does create that glare on camera. Um, I've seen on different sets and productions and music shoots where they pop out the lens and have the performer just wear the glasses without the lens to eliminate that glare. Of course, if you absolutely have to use your glasses because you really can't see and maybe, you know, you need something, you know, you're reading sheet music or something like that, like absolutely, of course, wear glasses with the lens. But typically what's done on set is they tend to pop out the lens. Um, on some shows, they do keep it in, like on a lot of the BBC shows that I've been watching, uh, they tend to keep the lens in because they're not afraid to have it feel a little bit more natural. But um, you know, I would say play around with it. Also with where Christine is sitting right now, we don't see much of a glare. So depending on if you're sitting, you know, yes, exactly. Like it'll all depend on where you're sitting in relation to the camera lens and where the light is hitting you. Cause even right now here, Christina, yeah. like we're not seeing much glare. No, but I, but the other thing is I need to be aware of it and just all the things that you can remove from, from the uh, noise of, of actually just doing a performance, you should remove. So mm -hmm. to answer that question, I think as well is if you don't have to wear those glasses, take them off because you don't want to be spending your time thinking about where your eyes are. You want to be mm -hmm. thinking about telling the story. Can I just and Carissa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I've noticed when I watch a live or when somebody is doing something music wise, if you have like a jangly bracelet that's smacking against the guitar and all you can hear is a smack, 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 like stuff like that, it to <laughs> me is the same as the glasses where it just takes your mind off of what they're actually doing versus, it, I don't know, things like that really bother me. Or if a necklace is like tapping onto a guitar, but it's like every two seconds. I don't know, if you can just take it off, things like that, yeah. minimize any of the distractions. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, I yeah. think that um, brings it back to my last point, and it's about props. If the props in your frame, if what you're holding or using becomes more distracting than complementary towards the performance, get rid of it. If it's a, if, again, with hats, and that's why we say, you know, in acting, like get rid of your hat because your eye gets drawn to it. It creates shadows. You really don't need it for the scene. Get rid of it. Um, jewelry, yes, that's another thing if it creates noise. Sometimes with glasses, I find that performers like to play with their glasses too. So if it's sliding, they're always pushing it up and then it becomes a performance about them, you know, pushing it up. <laughs> so yes, we don't want to distract from it. 
Yes. Yeah, um, great. That's awesome. Um, we've got to move on to Carissa now. I think we've, we've answered the questions and um, we're only four minutes, we're only four minutes behind. So we're doing amazingly. Perfect. Beatrice, that was so useful. And I think if anyone has any questions for Beatrice um, on her Instagram or she, or they want to do like an hour of, you know, kind of screen, screen prep for, for performers, I'm sure she'll be extremely um, amenable to that. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. Okay. Um, and our final panelist for today uh, is Carissa. Carissa Pukas or yeah, that's how I say the last name, like right? Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. Who are the P? Like, like Puka, but Pukas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so Carissa, uh, for those of you who don't know, I mean, I've just, I've done the introduction. She needs no introduction. Just check out her YouTube um, channel, uh, as well as her blog on her website. You could just find her anywhere. And she's just got such an inspirational um, brand. Uh, she's so genuine. Obviously, I absolutely adore Glenn. He's a really, really good friend of mine. Um, so one of the things that I wanted so much to hear about from you was how you're building this brand because you've just done it and you were like an OG YouTuber, right? You did that. Glenn was telling us you did that. You started on YouTube when there were like no, when nobody was on YouTube. Years ago. So nuts. Yeah. So the yeah. floor is yours. Well, you asked me to speak about um, posting consistency and building your brand. So if there's anything that anyone wants to jump in with the question, please hit me up. Um, it's kind of funny with content because there's definitely times where as a creative, it becomes difficult to produce and constantly produce and consistently produce. And from 10 years of doing this as my job, I've found that while yes, the consistency of content does matter, the consistency of engaging with your audience is paramount. It is so much more important to have a dialogue that is constantly going with your audience than it is to have a new piece of music or a new piece of video out every single day or every single week. Uh, I think that what people sometimes tend to forget is when you are a viewer and you're going to somebody's social media, it's more important to see a conversation and to see that person interacting than it is to see, oh, there's a new video, there's a new video, there's a new video. Because when you go to someone's Twitter feed and all it's doing is sharing the new video that the person put out, you don't get any of their personality. You don't get any of what makes them them. And to me, I think that's such a huge part of social media. You're not just there for just the content, you're there for the person. And so I think that that's a mistake that a lot of people beginning start to do is they just think, oh, if I keep producing, then you know everything will fall in place, the audience will be happy. But if you're not engaging, then I don't really think that it's all that useful to anybody. So there has to be the balance of consistent content and also consistency in the quality of your content. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be posting something new every single day. So I'd say that's probably the biggest thing with consistency that I've found because I have gone for dry spells of like, I just can't come up with something that I want to put out there. It's, you know, you, you make a video and you watch it back and you're like, wow, I, I don't love that. I have to refilm that that's okay. It happens to everyone and you don't need to be putting pressure on yourself to be getting that content out that consistently. You do have to be pressuring yourself to be talking to your audience and engaging with them. So I'd say that's kind of the number one thing. Can I, can I interject for a second then when, yeah. when you're talking about consistency of content, um, what, what do you do? Like you, obviously your background, you're a, you're a lifestyle brand, so mm -hmm. I can see your clothes. I can see some things yeah. in the, like, what do you do consistently in terms of your outfits? Like I've got a couple, we didn't get to a Beatrice, but I, I have a couple of outfits mm -hmm. where I was like, okay, I'm going to yeah. try and see whether or not like which colors work for me. And mm -hmm. then do I create like, you know, do I create a, 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 a color palette for my wardrobe, right? Because all of a sudden now this is popping a lot more. It's beautiful. <laughs> you look great. Crystal. <laughs> I think it totally depends um, on the style of content that you put out. If you are a okay. musician and you have kind of the time to create that character for yourself and you'd like to present yourself as, you know, maybe you're a punk rock person, you're probably not going to be putting yourself out there in like a pink feather dress, you know? And you're a little bit more conscious of stuff like that. But if you are somebody that's more lifestyle like myself, I have a little bit more playing room because people come to me for that change throughout. Like, I, I don't know, I think it's a little bit different pertaining to someone who is maybe a musician that way. You wanna kind of stay within your niche of, this is who my character is presented as. 
and you just think like what is the best way to present myself within those parameters so yeah and it, brandon i think brandon that, wanted to just jump just, in there so i just want to add on because i think you've heard every one of our panelists say it right now like the key point is knowing your brand you can't make these other decisions that we're telling you about until you know yourself better than we do that's what defines the rest of this definitely and to to have the room to like play around with it a bit like you definitely have fun with it but like i was saying like i mean if you're somebody who's making music like alice cooper you're not going to be putting out you know some Katy perry shit, really like and it's just the truth and i think that the consistency also kind of step or it, it pertains to your your social feeds like if you're somebody who wants to engage with their audience a little bit more you have to be aware of you can't necessarily talk about everything under the sun on the one account like have a personal account for that have things that pertain to your brand on your brand account so like again if, if you're a musician and maybe you are someone like swimmers i don't know if you guys know that brand they are a little bit political on their social media but it fits with their branding and it fits with their message and their lyrics and so they can interact that kind of a way but if you're an artist who you know maybe you're a softer folk artist or this or that and you don't really want to be talking about x y and z on social media keep that for your personal stuff and kind of stick within your own realm on your professional social media because people do follow for a reason right and and they like having that consistency of you go to that person you kind of know what you're going to get people like that in social media that kind of consistency i think really does matter um and, and i wanted and to ask carissa sorry i keep interrupting because i have so all these questions but um you've done that really really well but you couldn't have known what your brand was when you first started definitely not. how how did you because you you talk about that line between engagement you engage so well so authentically but you're also a very private person yeah um and so i mean i've seen so much about you how do you how do you go down that path of developing what that personality is without feeling like you're giving your whole soul to the internet trial and error definitely and like remember okay. this is something that i've been perfecting over 10 years of doing this it's not something that like within six months you're like i feel really great about this like it is something that will always change and you'll always find better ways to do it you just have to test the waters you know and when you're doing something a little bit different see how your audience reacts and ask for their feedback that's such a huge thing of it is a collaborative effort it's a community and you want to treat it like that because People want to feel heard, you know, and you'll find what works for your page and what works for your audience. And you can strike a balance between that. So when you say that, that's the thing I think that's really important for all of you musicians um, and cr any creatives who are watching right now. Um, one thing that Carissa does, I think, is she knows her audience really well. Um, obviously with Beatrice, um, with me as an actor, like you don't know your audience necessarily. We're playing different characters, but um, when you and when Brandon shoots someone in a music video, he really gets into who that character is and then kind of develops an audience profile, whether it's subconsciously or otherwise. Um, make sure that you develop who you who your audience is. And I was going to ask you, Carissa, what do your audience members get out of following you? Because we need to kind of transpose that into a musical side of things and go, well, what what do people love about my music? What do people Definitely. love about? And don't be shy to ask. Like I do that all the time or I'll do a set of Instagram stories where I'm like, Hey, so I would love to know why is it that you follow me? What's something that I've taught you that's resonated with you or what's a piece of content that I've made that you've loved and having that dialogue oh. or be, be really open and upfront with your audience. Because again, it makes them feel like there's a special connection between us. And that is social media. That is growing your account. That is everything when it comes to doing this whole world of online stuff. You want people to feel like they're heard and you want to create a connection. And so that's why I definitely say having that dialogue back and forth, don't be shy. People want to talk and they want to have a, the connection. So yeah, never mm -hmm. be shy with your audience. Um, and then I think mm -hmm. like back to the consistency thing, if you feel really inspired and you can pump out a piece of content every week, like that's awesome. Good for you. Keep on going. I would suggest build a stockpile of that because there will be a time where maybe you're not feeling so inspired and you need a couple of weeks of pre-done content that are already complete and finished. Um, for myself, I find building a content calendar usually is about a month ahead of time and I'm able to 
pre-film as much as I can and batch my content. And that's something that I would really recommend to anybody starting out is learn how to batch whatever you're doing. So as in you're taking your Monday and Monday you're shooting for Instagram and you have all of the stuff and you go like back to back to back shooting all day, maybe two or three videos that will live on Instagram. Maybe on Tuesdays you do all of your stuff for your Twitter. You know, and you pick your day and you get all of your content and you, you prepare it so that for the rest of the month, you don't have to scramble every single time you want to put a video up because that becomes very tiring. And I think that we've probably all fallen into that trap a bit, but you'll feel so much better about what you're putting out to the world if you have a little bit of a plan. Does anybody yeah, and I just that way? Well, I wanted to speak. We don't have any, I think we've got one q and I'm just looking at it. Um, uh, but I, I did want to just on the back of that for musicians, like that's the perfect way of, of working backwards to your album release or your single release. Um, creating that content is something I do not do well at all. So I'm going to take that into consideration. Um, but we do have one. I was just going to stick Sorry. one last thing in with that. Um, with your content, remember that you don't have to spread yourself too thin in the sense of like, you don't need to be posting to TikTok and to Twitter and to Facebook and to YouTube and like pick your maybe top two, top three things and really give your all into it. And remember that mm. algorithms in those platforms, they really like it when you are using all functions of that platform. So for Instagram, they like oh. it and they will prioritize your account if you're using stories, if you're using live, if you're posting in feed photos, if you're doing IGTV, you don't necessarily have to have it on like a continuous loop, but making sure to use every aspect of that particular social media platform, your content will perform better and it's proven. And I, you know, it's one of those things that you might uh. not, I don't love doing IGTV videos, but I film them for that sake because I know that even if I film something that's just a minute long, I probably will have better luck with the algorithm, making sure that all of the content is across the board. Smart. I did not know. That is an excellent hack. Um, okay, so I've got one question. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to just do the quick um, overview of Beatrice and Carissa's together. Um, so, uh, and someone's just written, Christina's just, uh, quite a few of you are, are asking whether it will be available after today. It will. It will, it will. <laughs> so Jimmy will, will send a link um, to what's, uh, what's, where to find it. Um, so one of the quick questions is, what are some of the tips in creating and maintaining dialogue with people who engage your social media? What, what are the tips and tricks? Like, do you spend an hour a day replying? Do you kind of try and block it out? Um, I've done both, to be honest, and it really just depends on how I'm feeling. If I feel really overwhelmed with computer work and there's too much on the go, then yes, like I will schedule in like, okay, between these times I'm answering social media and then I won't look at him mm -hmm. the rest of the day. Um, okay. When you're up and starting something though, honestly, to be available more often than not probably will be to your advantage. But on the flip side, you can become burnt out if you feel like you're on 24 seven. So there does have to be yeah. that balance. But you definitely will see more growth if you are available more often, especially when your account is smaller. That's for certain. Everything Chris awesome. is saying is absolutely right. Um, again, if you're going to be an entrepreneur or a musician, a lot of this can be 24, 7, 365. Um, but it's up to you to manage the expectations of your availability to other people. Mm -hmm. You respond to emails at 3 a.m., people will demand stuff from you at 3 a.m. Absolutely. Yeah. And they will totally. take full advantage of that. I won't lie. Like people, if they see you're working at that time, they will keep putting work your way. And I mean, if you're in the position yeah. where your headspace is fine, go for it. Like that is being an entrepreneur. That's being a creative. You kind of just go with your flow, but you do have to have that boundary set of, okay, I need a weekend or I need to make sure that I'm not, you know, answering emails at 3 a.m. You do need to set your own boundaries. Right. Um, okay, I'm going to, I know we're coming to the close of this, um, uh, but I want to just go through, I'm going to quickly go through Brandon's as well, but I'm going to just do a quick recap with my little bullet journal of, um, uh, of what we've all been talking about today. And then if there are any final, final questions, um, let me know. Uh, so for Brandon, uh, number one, know your intention. Uh, from a branding perspective a lot of this is coming back to branding and and the trial and error is a really good way of thinking about um about your brand is just start figuring out who you are there are some other resources we can probably share later when it comes to branding specifically um, but for women you want the soft smooth 
side generally. For men, you can afford a little bit more of a harsher light, but really all of it comes down to trial and error. Um, take your light inventory, use light to separate yourself and fog, if you have a fog machine, um, create the depth in your image. Um, your light source, uh, you should take note of whether it's a warm light or a cold light, uh, an internal or an external. Uh, make sure the light source is 45 degrees up and, and off of your head. Um, play around with parchment, paper, shower curtains. Uh, remember on your cell phones to lock your exposure. So with Beatrice, um, the next uh, panelist we had today was she, her, her main thing was one step at a time just take things one step at a time your performance is the most important thing be present be at ease be confident and note where the camera lens is which I am now doing with you um, so also note who the person is on the other side of the lens remember who you're speaking to and that feeds really well into what Carissa was talking about so um, there's the in terms of the different types of gaze there's the inward gaze there's the directly at camera and there's the outward gaze and one thing we didn't really speak too much on Beatrice was was just testing the the level of engagement right like you don't want me to be staring at you talking like this the entire time while I'm singing you a song that's creepy um, but find find your balance and what works for you um, so background test your background against your skin ask people to help you with it um and 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 get like i i basically call i have a few friends that i call and i get screenshots and i'm like okay this light this light turn it on turn it off just skype them zoom them whatever it is um and try it and see what pops the most because remember at the end of the day you're this big like you're this big in someone's screen if they're watching on a phone so you want to pop and you want to have enough space around you so that you are the focus um you're be invested in the story that you're telling as a musician and remember that the camera amplifies it amplifies everything we do so my hands are currently the size of giants to you um so remember what you're doing when you are talking to the camera and don't do what i do which is like gesticulate everywhere um uh, next thing is for Carissa, um, have a dialogue most importantly with your audience. That is the most important thing. Uh, make sure that you're con creating consistent content and make sure that it's consistently um, the quality that you can make it. Make that quality consistent. Know your brand. Ask your audience what they think of you, what's, what they love about you, what, why they tune in. Um, and if you only have a few people that are doing that, I think all of us can say we have at least a few hardcore fans. My mother is my best fan um actually my roommate as well um so ask the people that uh that are invested in you first and then you'll find more people like that where, as your brand gets stronger um build that special connection i love that just remember that that's the most important thing in the world is building a connection with the people that you want to be communicating with um that there's a life thing uh content calendar you can create carissa generally does it once a, for a month um, and batch your content. So go out, take the content that you're going to take, um, pick your day, pick your top two or three um, social channels that you want to be using and stick to them and also prioritize, uh, understand that they will prioritize your account more if you use all of the features on those platforms. So get to know what those features are. Don't spend a lot of time hopping from one to another. Um, make sure that you are really focusing on, on your core um, platforms and then set your boundaries <laughs> and make sure that you are taking enough time to be a human being. I think one of the things that we all have recognized more than anything in this pandemic is that, you know, entertainment is so important right now. The entertainment industry, we often forget as creators that we are, we're people that are creating something that alleviates someone else's pressure. So by them looking to us, we have a responsibility to present something that they can connect to. And that's our job as artists. That's our job as storytellers. That's our job as people who are curating shows for other people. Um, so anyone working in the entertainment industry, this is the time that we are the most needed. And it's up to us to create a feeling of safety, of connection, um, of, create, of shared creativity. Um, it's a really, really awesome time for us. So does anyone have anything else to add before we say goodbye? Um, I love that Chris's thing real quickly. I just want to throw out there. If you're going to do batch content capture, bring batch outfits. If you're shooting everything in a day, yes. switch your outfits between it. It looks like you just filmed for weeks. It's yep. I do it all the time. I'll change my hair. I'll put a little braid or a clip or just change something. And it's a whole new day. Brilliant. Yeah. 
That's all. Jimmy, what about you? Do you have anything to add? I've been skulking in the shadows this whole time. Um, I just want to add that this has been incredible. Um, just uh, responding to all the comments and engagement on Facebook, as well as here in our chat. Um, there's just been a ton of love. I love seeing the different people in in these chats also sharing their stories with each other and tips and and this, this sort of community on, on, on how we can, can best deliver this content, engage with audiences. It's just, it, it makes this all worth it. It gets me out of bed in the morning. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, Carissa, Beatrice, Brandon, that was phenomenal. I learned a ton. Obviously you can see I've got a few things to improve on my, on my shots as well here. Um, and, and Christina, that was, that was a fantastic um, flow. I think there's a lot of, a lot of great tips. A couple quick things. Obviously, yes, we will be reposting this video. It's going to live on our Facebook feed for, for a long time. Um, we also will be posting on, on our YouTube channel next week, full video recorded. Um, I've also pinned the different handles for our four speakers, including Christina today, um, which is on Facebook as well as in the chat here. You can reach out to us at musicbc, uh, info at musicbc.org with any questions or follow up. Um, I encourage you to keep the conversation going, of course. Um, what else? And yes, do fill out the survey at the end. That's all. I'm just ecstatic. Thank you so much, guys. Thank That's you guys so much. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Awesome. Um, well, I guess that's come to our time. I wish everyone a very safe and happy long weekend. Um, and again, thank you to our panelists today. Um, and we look forward to seeing everyone again next Friday at 11 a.m. for our next topic, which we'll be announcing early next week. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.